Okay, I want to try and demystify coordinate systems just a little bit. Um, so I'm starting a new project and I'm going to start without a template. This just opens a completely blank project. There's nothing here at all, but I can insert a new map. This is a map frame, basically, um, and it automatically loads, ArcGIS Pro automatically loads with a base map. And so now I have a map and I have my first layer, the base map. Um, I can look at the coordinate system of the base map through the map frame because this is kind of a, a different uh, setup because it's, it's drawing off the, the web. It's not, in, it's not on your computer. Okay, so then I can go to the coordinate systems tab and this is the current coordinate system for the map. It's what we're drawing in. It's the WGS84 Web Mercator. Under layers are all the different layers in my map, and then I can choose from geographic or projected coordinate systems. But this is how this is set up. And if you're working on your own laptop, you can favorite things. So the ones that you work with all the time, you can keep in a favorites folder. Okay, let's just quick take a look at what this Web Mercator looks like. This is, this is what it looks like. The Mercator projection was designed initially for navigation, for seafarers. Um, the angles between latitude and longitude are always uh, perpendicular, and north is always up. But the distortion, you can see the distortion is, well, pretty incredible. I mean, look at Greenland relative to India. India is actually bigger than Greenland. So this is a very distorted coordinate system. It does okay at the equator because there isn't a lot of distortion between latitude and longitude there. Um, as we move away from the equator, then the distortion increases and by the time we get into um, the northern part of North America, Alaska, uh, it's trash. Um, so my general rule of thumb is, and well, is just to get out of the web mercator as quickly as you can. And that happens when you add your first data set. So ARC piggybacks the coordinate system for your display off the first data that you add. And so some of you may have added data and just grabbed all three of these and thrown them into the map. And you'll see that it changes. It changes quite a lot. So the question is what happened? Which coordinate system did it pick up? And it turns out that it picked up this one because I think it was at the top of the list in your files. I don't know that for sure if that's why, but if we look, um, we can just go back into map. We can see that we're in a conic projection. If we were to wrap, cut this shape out and wrap it, it would make a cone. So um, that's kind of hopefully just demystifying that a little bit. It's also focused on North America or maybe the continental US. It's hard to tell from just looking at it like this. So that would be that would be the geographic area of focus. We don't really know what metric it's preserving because you can't tell that from looking at the map. We can just tell that it's a conic projection. All right, let's go into the properties for the map itself, not the data. And now you can see that under layers, we have three options. We have, oh, we have four because we have the base map, which makes perfect sense. We have the USA contiguous Albers equal conic. I wonder what that belongs to. Oh, that's from the counties data set. We have WGS 1984. That's from, um, oh, so it didn't pick up Albers. That's interesting. Um, so that's from um, this big set of polygons here. And then we have the Albers, NAT 83 Albers, and that is attached to the raster, the um, vegetation raster. So, but the current display coordinate system is the NAD 83 Albers. Oh, that is, it did pick up here. I'm just reading it all wrong. So the, yeah, so this raster is the, is the, is the data set basically that drove the change in coordinate system for our display or for our map. So the NAD 83 Albers, a lot of you on the um, answer form this week chose NAD 83 Albers, and I'm guessing it's because you added the data and now the map is drawing in this coordinate system, but this isn't the coordinate system of the base map. The base map is in WGS84 Web Mercator. So that's how you can read, read the layers. I can change if I don't want it to be displaying in NAT83 Albers, I could choose something else like US contiguous um, Albers equal area conic. 
and hit OK. We'll see if there's any change. I'm guessing there's not a lot of change, except I think it focused down here as far as trying to reduce distortion. But a lot of times you're not going to see the change on the map because it's math that's going on behind the scenes. Um, let's just change it to the WGS84 just for the fun of it so we can see how different that one is. So this is a geographic coordinate system. The, quest the first question on the answer uh, form was what are the three main geographic coordinate systems used in North America? And you can see the distortion happening here. This is, this is how geographic coordinate systems are displayed on a flat surface. It borrows a coordinate system called plat carré, which means fat square, because lines of latitude are drawn as parallel and they're equally spaced. But lines of longitude, um, which normally would converge at the poles, are displayed as parallel lines. And as we approach the poles, we get enormous, well, look at Antarctica, enormous distortion. So that's what a geographic coordinate system looks like when we display it on a map. Um, I, think, I think that's enough. Um, I guess the only other thing to mention is that because ArcGIS Pro has made geodesic calculations possible, and it's actually the default to make calculations in a geographic coordinate system, um, the idea of the projections has become almost secondary. Um, and I have been posting to Esri to look for an answer for why we need projections, and I think it gets pretty into the weeds. Um, I would, from my understanding, for all intents and purposes, geodesic calculations are going to give us um, the best results, but um, that isn't completely true. <laughs> but the projections. I think in, in, in kind of funkier areas, like toward the poles, or um, I think under specific circumstances, it's possible that a projection is gonna work better. I tend to work in projections um, when I'm doing my own research. If I'm working in Utah, um, you know, um, NAD 83, the UTM zone 12 is really well suited for preserving area and distance calculations for a small um, you know, region of extent. Um, if you're dealing with the Intermountain West and you're crossing multiple UTM zones, then it gets a little funkier and I would um, recommend using the geodesic calculations. But the tricky thing is in order to do a calculation in a projection, you have to have a data set that's actually in that projection. At, well, the data has to be hard projected. And that's something I recommend not doing unless it's absolutely necessary, because every time you run project on a data set, there's a slight, you know, loss in quality. So, yeah, I, I tend to use the display, but you can't do that in ArcGIS Pro anymore. Um, you have to hard project, and I, and I think that's uh, a little bit troublesome. So maybe I've opened a bigger can of worms, but hopefully... The bigger goal was to demystify coordinate systems a little bit to see where they come from, see how they're arranged um, in the properties, and how this layers section works. These are all the layers found in your map. They tell you which data set they come from. And it's good to know that when you add your first data set, the display changes to that data's coordinate system.